Hi, welcome back to Gin Fun at winemastery.co.uk. I'm here in Massam. What a wonderful part of North Yorkshire this is. And we're here to talk about the spirit of Massam gin. Now, I'm with somebody very special. You're going to learn all about them in just a moment. Hi, I'm John Lightfoot and this is... Derek Howell. And we're here to tell you all about this wonderful gin uh, that Derek has produced um, here in North Yorkshire. Uh, but before we get into that, um, I'd just like to talk to you, Derek, about a little bit about how it started. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, nobody sort of... Well, I suppose some people leave school and decide that's immediately what they're going to do. Uh, how long have you actually been making gin now? Uh, we've been making gin for around about two and a half years now. So that's since we first set off with so our first gin. So you started when you were about 16? Uh, I wish I, wish I was. <laughs> No, 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 no. Uh, unfortunately, I've been well into my 50s. Um, but we, we, we started uh, from a, a slightly different position. We were al already in the alcohol business, so to speak. So we were wine merchants. Okay. Uh, and that's how we got into, the, into, into producing our gin. Uh, but we were very, very fortunate to have somebody to assist us in that process. Uh, so we uh, had a, a chap named uh, Gerard McCluskey who gave us that first break uh, and allowed us to, to move forward with our, our product. Uh, and it, it ties into something we actually produce as well as, uh, as, as selling wines. We have a masala chai tea and a rooibos tea. Uh, so that's two of the product lines that we do. And he t he'd taken our masala chai tea and used that as the botanical base for our gin. Uh, so in that particular masala chai, you've got two types of, of tea. Uh, they're both from Ceylon, uh, they're both high level orange pico whole leaf teas. We blend those together, we take six different spices, things like cardamom, cinnamon, ginger, star anise, black peppercorn and cloves. Uh, some of those are toasted to release the oils in the spices. That's then blended with the tea and all of that is enrobed in Australian eucalyptus honey. So that's a pretty unique set of base ingredients for your botanical mix. On top of that, we actually put a little bit of massum into our, uh, our gin. Massum is renowned, as I'm sure a lot of your viewers uh, will understand, with brewing beer. Yes. So we're very lucky to have both Black Sheep and Theakston's breweries in town and we use uh, in our gins some reference to brewing in each of our gins. So in our original uh, Masala Chai and Hop Gin we're using Challenger Hop and that goes into both Black Sheep and Theakston's Best Bitter. So, so effectively that is our anchor down into Massam uh, with our gin. Is, is the Challenger hop, is that grown locally? Is that, is that, or is that it's an English hop okay. uh, and it, it is the English Challenger hop that we use. You can, you can get Challenger from, from Belgium okay. uh, but it is the English version that, that uh, we use in uh, our particular gin. Wow, so you, you went, so obviously, did, well, but actually what triggered, you said you sort of, you, you met somebody and, and, and uh, you produced, uh, sort of started producing, but what actually sort of, you, so you were selling wine successfully and happy, you know, really yeah, enjoying yeah. that. So what actually sort of said to you, well, you know, I know we're doing this and I know we're being successful at this, but actually I want to produce some gin. What, what, what was the... Well, some, some of that was down to seeing other successes. Mm -hmm. uh, business very close to us was helpful in our journey uh, in moving forward. So Mason's Gin, uh -huh. uh, we helped them in their early formative days as, as, a, as a stockist of their gins, promoting that for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and they helped us get onto the, on, into the gin by producing our first batch, okay. uh, which was produced at their distillery, then transferred to us. But it was made to our recipe using our ingredients. Uh, we kind of pinched their still, yeah. and then it was transferred back to Mass where we've always done all of our bottling and labelling and that was just for the first few batches. Uh, after that we uh, started here uh, with our first still which is Little Stan which we had a little look at earlier. Yeah we've, we've obviously a photograph of that. Yeah and uh, Little Stan he is a, a 20 litre still so he's only a little baby. These fellas here for the gin experience that we, we offer, the 12 stills up here, they're all two litre stills. So little Stan is 10 times bigger than these. Okay. But that's not big in distilling terms. No. Um, so we very quickly, once we got producing, and once Gerard had taught me how to distill our gin, uh, I was distilling here, uh, kind of started off two, maybe one or two days a week, and ended up distilling five days a week. We were very lucky that with the wine business, we already had a marketplace. Yes. Uh, and that's key. Uh, if anybody wants to set up their own distillery, there's a heck of a lot of 
work you have to do to get through that. Yeah. We're in a very fortunate position where the business plan that we took to HMRC uh, was readily acceptable to them because we were already in the marketplace, we had alcohol wholesalers licenses, premises licenses, etc. Yeah. And to get our distilling license and uh, our duty sticker license, etc. There's a lot of other things you need to put in place. But to get those, because we were a, a business that was already uh, in the trade, so to speak, it was a little bit simpler for, for us to move forward. Um, so we launched our gin and uh, it gradually well, it grew very, very, very quickly because it went out to the pubs, restaurants and hotels that we supply. Yeah. And then it very, very quickly went out to people like Wensdale Creamery, Campbell's of Laban, Lewis and Cooper's. It, it, it got a lot of traction uh, because we were uh, well known relatively in the in the, in the area anyway. In the yeah. Area. Yeah. 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 So just taking you back a little bit then, you, mm. you mentioned you mentioned the tea. Now yeah. I, I, that's that, that seems like quite an unusual. I must is it? I'm, I'm I don't know, but it, it may well be a unique ingredient in terms of gin. It, 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 when we set off it, there's no there's nobody else actually producing what we what we call our gin is a masala chai gin. Okay. Uh, but our the root of our product goes back to Australia. Um, so essentially, we have family out in Australia that have vineyards. We're very lucky in that respect, and we do try to get. It must out be them. awful going to see them. It's tragic. It's it tragic. must be awful. It's <laughs> terrible. We, 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 to, we, we do actually stay on the vineyards, which is sensational, uh, and they're, they're, they're phenomenal people. Uh, they really look after us really well. Lovely. Um, sensational to have have, oh, that, have that link. It must be. Um, and we are spoiled, <laughs> um, and essentially. On one of our visits out there, um, we um, dropped our cases at my sister's place uh, and she offered us a cup of tea and off she went and came back and came back with masala chai. Okay. Um, so when we were given masala chai, we were thinking, I just wanted a cup of Yorkshire tea. Um, but we got the masala chai and thanked her graciously and drank it and we're quite surprised. It was very refreshing, really, really nice, fantastic flavours. Uh, and we thought it was wonderful, but that was it. Um, but on that particular visit, and this is going back to 2012, um, we went around tea shops, coffee shops, restaurants and bars and what have you, and everywhere in Australia was, we bumped into masala chai tea. Okay. And it wasn't there two years prior. So I said to my sister, what's this all about? Yeah. And she explained it wasn't just Melbourne, it was in all across uh, Australia at the time. Yeah. Uh, so that's when we, well, being the kind of guy I am, <laughs> got in touch with the, um, the director of that particular company and started opening a dialogue uh, and seeing if they could look at bringing it into the country. Mm. We quickly re realised that it was going to be quite an expensive process to get it from them to us and all the cost implications involved in that mm -hmm. uh, and then to market the product afterwards. But uh, my wife and I had spent many, many years in the food industry, so we decided to do it ourselves and create our own masala chai tea. Wow. And that's where that, that germ came from. Okay. It originally goes back to India. I mean, in, in India, um, you, you will have a masala chai tea or a chai tea as you're walking around, and it tends to be black tea, uh, cardamom, and lots and lots of sugar, sugar cane. Um, but in our particular product, we don't use sugar cane, we use Australian eucalyptus honey. Okay. And it gives it a unique flavour uh, and a camphor note that comes from that honey, which, which gives it that definite... Uh, well, difference. I had, I had the, the fortune, I had a nice cup of tea of it just before we started filming. It is, folks, it is really, really delicious. It is, it's very special. It is, it's unique. It, it's, yeah. uh, it, it doesn't have, a, there's nothing else that tastes like it. No. And if you go back to that original Indian tea, yeah. it doesn't taste, it, it re reflects that. And it reflects its origin, mm. um, but it is several steps on. Yes. Uh, and, and all of those different subtle ingredients that are layered in there, the cardamom, cinnamon, ginger, star anise, black peppercorn and cloves, the teas and the honey, yeah. really, really worked well to get to give a, a, a really nice refreshing drink. Fantastic. Well, obviously you can see that there's lots of these little stills around here. And, and to, as part of your operation, you've decided to uh, share your knowledge with other people if, if they want to partake. Yeah. So could you tell us a little bit about the gin experience you, you run? Here. Yeah, the, the gin experience uh, came, came along because we had the space uh, uh -huh. and the space was there. We'd actually visited somebody else's gin experience. You mm -hmm. know, there are others in London, in Manchester, mm -hmm. uh, etc. And we tried a few and thought it's a great idea, fantastic concept. And we thought we could add our little spin on it and it would work well with the, the facility we've got. The other part of it also, it gives you a phenomenal R&D facility. So, yeah. So, so we, we can actually very quickly 
replicate favors and, and, and work on lots of different distillations at once. Yeah, so there's 12, you've got 12 here. We've got 12 stills that yeah, people so you can, can come 12. along and create their own gins on. Yeah. But that also gives us 12 stills that we can actually play with. Instantaneously, yeah. 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 So we can have at lots once. of fun. Yeah, lots uh, of fun. Yeah. Yeah, so so basically the day, I guess the day is that, that, that people come along, they have a look around at the, dis, the distillery itself, presumably. Yeah, I mean, they, they come to our bar and they have a gin and tonic at the bar, oh, always dear. a double. Uh, and uh, then we go through a little bit of a screen show and they get a history of gin. We take them back in time to the Ice Age and then bring them all the way through, the, through time, basically, little time jumps where the salient points and changes in history of, of gin, all the way from juni juniper through to, to the end product, and to where the law changed in 2009 uh, by a decision that Sipsmiths made to, to, to take the government to task over the legislation behind uh, gin. That got changed. It went to, to high court and got changed. Okay. Uh, and that really is the root of where gin has become popular. I mean, at our shop in, in Massam, people not, often come and say, oh, bye, isn't gin popular? And it's not popular, it's a change in the law that's allowed small batch production to occur. Okay. Uh, and that's why the, there's quite a proliferation of, of new gins out there. Yeah. Uh, but there's not that many proper uh, distilleries out there producing uh, handcrafted London dry gins. No, so. no, and I think one of the things we're, we're, we're going to have a video of uh, uh, where Derek's going to actually explain how you make gin, and I'll put a link to that video on this. So if you want to learn about how craft distilled uh, gin is made, uh, I'm sure that'll be of, of interest to you. So in terms of, uh, the, you, you started off with a gin, mm. and obviously I guess what drive you, drove you to that was this, this, this tea that made it like the, the, the difference. The yeah, that, that was our unique product. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's nobody else in the UK producing a masala chai like ours, a, t a masala chai tea product. Uh, and behind that we, we did actually launch uh, the rooibos which is uh, a decaffeinated version, because uh, we would have people coming into the shop saying, we love the masala chai tea, but I want something that I can have at, at later, later in the evening, and it's not going to keep me awake, because you've got caffeine in, in the, the, the beautiful teas that we, we bring in from Salon. Okay. Um, so we, we, we scratched our heads and thought for a while, and came up with the idea that rooibos is very popular, or red bush tea, red uh, bush, yeah. which is South African. Yeah. Uh, and we did some experiments with different flavor profiles with that and launched the, the rooibos tea behind that. And that is unique. There's nobody in the world producing a, a, a red bush or rooibos masala chai tea. Because it's got all those lovely spices in uh, and the red bush tea and the honey. Wow. Yeah, so, so it's very unique. Um, but we, 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 we didn't really market it hard. We didn't push it hard. Um, but we've got a, a following of people that come into the shop and buy it and it's bought online uh, through Amazon. We've got it on there and on our website. And, and the sales are enough for us yeah uh, we don't we don't want it to go uh, stratospheric because uh, it's very difficult to keep it with production as it is yeah because some of our production has to be now diverted into the gin yes and kilos and kilos of that masala chai go into our first gin that original masala chai and hot gin uh, wow so that's uh, a key ingredient and we don't change that recipe it is just the recipe we started with and it's the right quantity to go into that distillation Wow, but I also know you, you have other gins as well. What, what, mm. what's, what, what, what drove you to, to introduce more gins and uh, what sort of other gins do you have? Well, we're very fortunate to have uh, a first class distiller, uh, a guy called Jake McCluskey. Uh, <laughs> Cut. <laughs> <laughs> Jake Wilson, uh, right, Jared so McCluskey. We're, we're very, just uh, take yeah. it from we're very, we're very fortunate to, yeah, yeah. 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 So, do you want me to do the question again? Yeah, 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 Let's do the question. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So you've got the, you know, you, the, the the one gym, but you've I noticed that. <laughs> what? Sorry. What was that? What was it? <laughs> it's just the the cock up. I see. I'm just, uh, just I'm gonna get it out of my head. <laughs> 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 so, uh, Jake would love me for that. <laughs> and, and so <over> Gerard. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> this is a hard part, isn't it? So getting a straight face. I'm, I, can, yeah, I, can I can understand. I don't, I don't do this for a living. You don't, you don't. You don't have to. I know. I, if I laugh. So I, I'll give you a link to one of our a hundred video, and all it is is me and John laughing because it was just the outtakes of us mm. just, just laughing. I, I, I am sure when you're sampling a few drinks, it kind of gets yeah. worse. Straight face. I don't know whether I'm going to get back from this. <laughs> mm. um, <laughs> 
Sapper fish. <laughs> 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 now they're looking, I think, why is his face gone red? <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's, well, it's not, it's, it's not going to cut in very well. Well, no, don't worry. What I do is I say we've just cut in because something that uh, uh, Derek said has really amused him. So <laughs> we we had to stop for him to finish his laugh. So yeah. if he bursts out again, you understand. No, absolutely. Yeah. I'll try and control myself. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I do that. Yeah. yeah. But, so we've just cut out there and cut back because something that uh, Derek said really, really made him laugh, and and we, I didn't want you sitting there just watching him laugh. <laughs> so <laughs> we're back, and hopefully yeah. he's controlled and composed. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> that was funny though. So uh, you've got that. You've started off with that one, uh, Jim, revolved around yeah. the tea. What? What actually then? Make I've seen that you've got other bottles on the shelf. Mm. What actually made you think? Well, actually, we should do some others. Was that a demand from people, or was that something you just you know I developed mean, into? There's, there's several different things behind that. W one is as a business. Again, you need to have a, a, a layer of, of different products. You can't just live on one product. Okay. Uh, also, that product was developed uh, for us, and we wanted to do something ourselves as well, something that we were in passionate about and involved in. Not that we weren't passionate about the original, because it's got our product in it. Yeah. Um, but what moved us on was uh, a, a drive to, to make something new and, and, and different. And, and our distiller, Jake Wilson, he is, is actually so enthusiastic and so, so driven to to come up with crazy and, and different ideas. Uh -huh. and we, we do actually have all on to holding back at most of the time. Um, but when we, we couple that up with the dynamic that we have as a team here, uh, some of the, the things that come out are fantastic. But our route is always back down to Massam. Uh -huh. uh, and and Massam and that, that resonation with, with the history of brewing. Uh, our next gin was uh, chocolate malt barley. And chocolate malt barley might sound rather sweet and sugary, but it isn't, it's, it's a very grown up uh, gin. Um, uh, it, it's uh, quite a powerful gin and it's often uh, liked more by the male fraternity than the female fraternity. So, so we do get people coming in and say, oh, chocolate gin. Yeah. But it's not chocolatey in that sense. It's, it's a, it's a kind of takes some bitter dark chocolate notes. So the, the, the drink itself, its, its root is the chocolate malt barley. Okay. And that's used in the brewing industry to make uh, dark beers like porters, stouts, Guinness, etc. Um, so we, we, we took that as, the, as that basis uh, and then round that we've built all the other flavour profile and the other botanicals. So we're using things like organic cacao uh, that goes in there. We break that up because it's the whole bean uh, that goes in, so it's nothing that's, uh, that's processed or manufactured. Uh, then we take things like coconut, rose hip, uh, and one of the other key ingredients uh, is, is Taylor's uh, Italian dark roast coffee. Oh, okay. And the reason why we chose that, because Taylor's is local, yeah. but it wasn't, it wasn't that, it was actually the, the tasting notes behind that coffee, uh, which, which is bitter dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. And that's something we wanted to come through in the gin. So we use that in a very balanced, measured manner uh, as part of that ingredient mix, right. uh, in that botanical mix for the gin. Uh, so along with a lot of other botanicals that go in there, the things you'd expect, obviously your juniper and peels, etc. Yeah. Um, so that became our second gin. Uh, and, and that, that that was called chocolate malt barley. Chocolate malt barley, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then our third gin, uh, we did it the other way around. Uh, most people launch their classic first, okay. and, and, and then work around their classic to deliver the different product profile that they want. Yeah. Uh, but all of our gins are stripped right down to zero, and we build them up individually. Uh, so so it's as if. Three or, four, three or four different distilleries have done them. Uh, yeah. They're completely different flavour notes and profiles. Yeah. Um, so the, uh, the classic that we developed uh, is a modern spin on a classic. Um, so we've taken some of the key notes that you would find in a classic gin, sort of, sort of very citrus lead and juniper lead, uh, and we've reduced some of those things down. So we've taken out some of the uh, lime peel and replaced that with kaffir lime leaf, for example. Okay. Uh, the lemon peel, we've reduced that down slightly and substituted that with lemongrass. So that gives that modern spin wow, on yeah. a traditional London dry uh, gin, a classic. Yeah. Um, and the other things that go in there that, that, that really revive and refresh it are things like pomelo peel that we're using in there. And then the gold element, because it's called classic gold, is Golding's hop. And, okay. and Golding's Hop, again, is that anchor down into Massam and the brewing history of Massam. Yes. Um, and then finally, the other gold element is Golden Berries. And that just has a little touch and a twist of sweetness in there. 
uh, just to move it slightly off, what you would, in wine terms you would call off dry. Okay. Uh, so, but so, so the, the golden berries. I've never heard of them before. Are they? Are yeah, they golden berries are often called Inca berries. Okay. Uh, so, so are they UK grown or they? No, no, nah. they, they, they are from uh, South America. Okay. Uh, and they're, they're golden berry with a little leaf around them, uh, but we use them dried. Okay. Uh, as with all of our botanicals, are, are dry botanicals. Sure. Yeah. Well, fantastic, okay. fantastic. So, and and then you, you have a, a ras. Do you have a ras? Rubric, rhubarb. Rubric, rhubarb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was uh, slightly more commercially focused. Where the other three gins are all London dry gins. Yes. Uh, and we could see that the marketplace demand for for rhubarb gin was was, was huge. Yeah. But it took us a long time to develop it because we we don't add uh, flavourings in there post distillation. Uh, the only thing we do do because of again demand from public and when we tested it with, with people they were expecting to see a, a, a pinky reddish hue yeah. in there whereas when you're distilling a London dry it's always crystal clear yes um, so we bowed to that uh, and we, we actually put a, a little bit of color in there just to give it when you actually mi mix up the the, the the rhubarb gin it gives a lovely pink hue in there uh -huh. um, but we're using uh, proper rhubarb from the rhubarb triangle Okay. Yes. Yorkshire rhubarb. Yes. And we're using that on an 80 20 basis. So we're using 80% uh, of the rhubarb comes from the rhubarb triangle. Yes. And 20% comes from my garden. Oh, really? Yeah, we have a huge rhubarb patch in the garden. So 20% that goes into our, our rhubarb gin comes out of the back garden. Wow. So, wow. so we grow our own rhubarb. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Which, we, which we do freeze. So we actually yeah. we, we portion that up, we bag it into the batch sizes yeah. uh, to keep it simple yeah. and then we freeze that down and hold that uh, to the point where we need to, to use it because you know the, the, the Yorkshire rhubarb season is sort of December through to the end of February, early March. Uh, so if mm. you want to produce that product throughout the year you have to hold it. Of course, it. Uh, yeah, uh, so of course, yeah. And we want to keep that genuine and true to, to, to Yorkshire. Of course, yeah, as, as all of the product is. Fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I wonder if we could actually uh, taste a couple of them and then... Uh, sounds like a good idea. Sounds good to me. Okay, we'll be with you in a sec. Okay. Wow, so now we're to the really, for me, the really exciting bit. I guess you've tasted this before. Once or twice. <laughs> Once or twice. <laughs> Every time we produce it. <laughs> Every time. Yeah. And several times during that pr oh, process. Many, many times, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, when we're doing our cuts, it's, our gin's always done on the flavour. So when, when we're doing our, uh, the head's cut, it's a flavour. Uh, so we don't use uh, other things like uh, just time or alcohol by volume, etc. It's just done absolutely on that flavour. And then the same when we've done the hearts, it's the next cut to the tails is all done on flavour. So yeah, you've got to taste right the way throughout. The so just like a chef, you're actually tasting it through yeah. the process to absolutely. make sure it's and, and then you're just so you're not you're not saying this is this is this is the formula we we you know uh, to yeah. use my layman terms we cook it for so long and and then boom we we, yeah. we take it out of the oven you're actually tasting it through the process all the way through that process we're making sure that it's perfect and that's that's what that's what we want to deliver to our customer yeah uh, that, that perfect experience excellent okay so can we start with a neat one yeah that, that's a, a, the, the neat of the uh, masala chine hop so that's our original gin okay. uh, and what you've got in there you've got uh, Obviously, you've got your, the, the, the basics in there, the, the juniper, the coriander, there's peels in there, and angelica we use as a fixative. Um, but the main element, of the star of the show, is our masala chai and the hops. Yeah. So the masala chai, you're going to get lots of spices coming through there. So those flavours are going to come through, things like, again, the cardamom, cinnamon, ginger, star anise, black peppercorn and cloves. Yeah. You've got the hop, a little touch of hoppiness coming through too, so okay. have a little taste. Mmm. Mm. So, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I got the, the the chai. Wow, it goes through like a roller. You get one taste, and, I, and I, when you were saying chai, I was expecting because that was the base. Mm. I was expecting that to be first, but I didn't get that first. No, I got, but the, the chai certainly came at the end. That and I'm left with that lovely, sweet, sweet but not sickly. Uh, oh, that was beautiful. That was like. If you're just if you're just drinking it neat, this is this is certainly a, a glass uh, to you know to, to savor neat, and uh, literally the, the taste just change in your mouth as 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 they roll. And I'd have to have a few. I, I'm not going to do it now, 
I'll have to have a few glasses of it because actually I was, I was going, what's that taste? And just as I was trying to work out what that taste was, another taste had come it, it along. It does ping pong a yeah. around a bit and then you get all of those subtle flavours that roll through. It yeah. tends to finish on star anise, that, 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 that star anise note that comes through mm -hmm. because that's one of the things in the masala chai that comes through. But the subtle things are the teas that are in there. Those two salon teas are, are, yeah. are balanced in our chai. But that goes into the distillation as a whole. Yeah. Um, so, so it's a very complex gin. Uh, yeah. And but but again, with subtlety, it's it's it's, it's not slapping it about the face. No, it's not it's in any any way, shape, or form. Yeah, I, I got the the, the 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 tea particularly came uh, through after I'd finished swallowing. Mm -hmm. It's just the the mouthfeel left. Yeah. The, the, you get a little bit of dryness from those tannins that are yeah. in the tea. Yeah. Very nice indeed. It's very sophisticated, I have to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very nice indeed. Thank you. So try it with tonic. Now, yeah. in terms of tonic, the question mm -hmm. I always ask is, um, you know, there is the camp that says, um, actually, you know, the distiller's done all the hard work getting the taste just as he wants it. Don't spoil it by putting in flavoured tonics. Mm -hmm. uh, the other camp is, well, actually, you know, flavoured tonics can help to bring out the flavours within the gin, mm -hmm. and actually you should experiment and try different flavoured tonics. Where do you stand on that? It's always one of personal taste, so everybody's palate's different. But but it, it is right. I mean, if if a distiller, either myself or Jake, uh, I mean, and Gerard McCluskey, who, who came with that, our, our original recipe, it's it, people want. Well, we want people to try it as we've developed it. Um, from that. If you try a gin, and we always say taste it neat straight away. Mm. Uh, so when you're tasting a gin for the first time, try it neat. That way you're gonna see whether it's been stretched or whether it, it, it's been a deep cut. So the harshness will come through. So if it burns the back of your throat, it probably isn't as well made as you, as, as you maybe anticipated. Um, so our gins are all made and it's very tight cuts uh, and, and small cuts. So effectively, it's the premium end that we're, we're, we're working on. Mm -hmm. So our gins are sipping gins. So, so you can actually have them neat over ice, and it, it won't burn the back of your throat. Hopefully, you didn't get that. You're gonna warm, no, you get a warming all. sensation. Yeah, of from course. The alcohol. Yeah, nice, but nice warming glow rather yeah. than a. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. No, there's no, there's none of that nasty bite. Aggressive, no, yeah, aggressive no. Note. No, no. So, so that that's what we would do. As regards to tonics. Um, Again, we, we use uh, what we call distiller's tonic, uh, and we use the distiller's tonic, uh, and we're the northeast stockist uh, for distiller's tonic, so you might say we're going to advocate that, but we, we searched high and low for, for the tonic that m matched in with our gins. Uh, and this one, it sits right back in the gin. So it's got reduced sugars, it's got reduced carbonation, so it doesn't have as many bubbles in there. Okay. Uh, and it, it really is a subtle tonic. There's not, there's not a tremendous amount. You still get the quinine notes coming through. Yeah. Uh, but it's not going to overpower the gin. Okay. If you've gone and spent forty pounds on a proper handcrafted London dry, yeah. You want to taste the gin, not the tonic. Of course. Um, there are some tonics that pair beautifully with gins as well, so it's not knocking other tonics in that respect. No. But we we want people to try our gins, and when we when people come to the gin experience. They try it with a neutral, that neutral tonic, uh, and it lets that shine through. So that's the reason why we use that particular tonic. There are exceptions, and the exception is with uh, the third gin. We we always pair that with a straightforward fever tree. Okay. The reason for that is it's chocolate malt barley, and we want to engender some of those sweeter notes. Uh, and fever tree tends to have a little bit more sugar in there, so it gives that. That, that little sweeter element in that particular gin. Okay. And we also use that in our rhubarb again for that particular reason. Sweetness. Yeah. Um, so so there are there are moments where you want to change your tonic. Yeah. Um, but we always say try our gins naked first, not yes. literally. Yes. Otherwise yeah. this would be a, a pretty awful show you watch. <laughs> um, so try try it with just the tonic in and, uh, and and that way you're gonna see what the distiller wanted you to try. Then if you uh, feel it needs a little bit more orange in there or a little bit drier. If you want it drier, put a few bay leaves in or some juniper berries, they'll, they'll float in, they'll dry it out a bit. Okay. Uh, or if you prefer that some more citrus peel in there, if you want a bit of orange, put a bit of orange peel in, that will alter it towards your taste. Okay. Uh, so do that as the third step. So, yeah. so, so neat, neutral tonic, and then play with it to suit yourself if it's not where you want to be, but you can see where you want to go. Yeah. So that's how we would look at it. Okay, well, that seems, seems very, very uh, common sense there to me. So, okay, so trying it with tonic. Yeah, I can see you. Again, sometimes you get tonic, you, sometimes you, you can just be tonic, but that's not the case here. Oh, yeah. That, that is um, for sitting and enjoying this is for standing 
on the lawn with friends in the sunshine mm -hmm. uh, being ref it's beautifully refreshed it just brings out I'm not sure what it brings out as you know I'm, I'm the dummy in the taste but it, it just brings out uh, 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 I was gonna say it must be the citrus side because it's not fruity in terms of like sweet mm -hmm. but it just brings out a slightly fruitier taste in, in mm -hmm. uh, it. so essentially what's happening there is every time you dilute uh, the gin down so you know we're producing a high strength gin you know 80% ABV we, we're taking that down to bottling strength so we're diluting it down aren't we we're taking it down to 42% which is the percentage of our gin so that releases some more of those lovely botanical flavors yeah uh, it's akin to people when they're tasting their whiskies will we'll taste it with, with water and that water dilutes the whiskey down and allows some of the other bouquets to come out from that particular product. Yeah. And it's the same with gins. So all you've done by now, taking it from 42% and adding the tonic in, and we've added it in, added in per measure, uh, and we always suggest a double yeah. to a full bottle of tonic. Okay. Um, or if, you, if, you're, if you're in a pub and you get a single, just put half your tonic in and save the other half for uh, your next one, Yeah, hopefully. Yes. Um, or just buy a double, which is more sensible. Yes. Uh, so, so that proportion of putting that uh, tonic in, 200 mils of tonic to 50 mils of gin, take it round to around about 8% you know, ABV. So you've dropped it down in alcohol terms again, but that allows it to release some more of the aromatics coming out of there. Yeah. So you get those other, other flavours coming out you, we, that you wouldn't get in the neat form. So it releases yeah. that and lets it happen. I see, I see, yeah, because it was quite, not you know, it wasn't a hundred hundred miles away from it, but it, it, it was definitely different. It was mm. definitely different. Yeah, and that so, should happen. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. So wonderful gin and tonic, wonderful gin and tonic, and and you know, in, in terms of, uh, I accept it's not a, a, a classic in, in in the way that you know mm -hmm. you've, you've described your your classic, but. Um, it's not. It's not. Some people, I think, are sometimes put off uh, when it's not going to be anything other than London Dry because London Dry is what they like. This is so. It's, I say it's more complex when you're drinking it neat, but it's, it's so subtle. It's slightly different from a London Dry, but I would venture but to it, suggest it is a London Dry. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so it is distilled in the London Dry gin in, in the classical sense. Yeah. yeah so it's, classical. it's not a classical gin. No. Uh, but all of our gins, except for the rhubarb. Uh, London, London, London Dry, dry gins. Yeah. 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 So what, what I was going to say is that I, I would venture to say that if you like a classical uh, dry gin, you will, you know, that won't be any way, shape or form uh, against your taste buds, I would venture to say. Super. So what, what do we have next? Uh, next is uh, lined up is our classic. Oh, uh, and funny okay. enough, we haven't got them actually in, in uh, order of pr in, in, when we launched them. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the second one we launched was the chocolate malt barley, but we'll move on to that because of its flow, flavor profile. Okay. Um, so the second one we've got is our classic, which okay. we developed third or last in that respect, other than the rhubarb. Yeah. And it's, uh, it is very much a classic gin in terms of its juniper lead. It is, uh, it's got lots of uh, peels in there. And that's, that's a sign of a classic, lots of those peel notes in. But what we've done is reduce some of those peels down. So we reduce the lime peel down and put in, as I think I mentioned earlier, uh, a kaffir lime leaf. We reduce the lemon peel down and put uh, lemongrass in there. And there's a, quite a few other blends in there of, of, of things like pomelo peel. And again, that's not a, not a common peel that would go into a gin. So it's put a very modern spin on a classic gin. Yeah. And the gold elements are Golding's hop, because our anchor down into Massam is, is the brewing industry and, and that's what Massam is famous for. Yeah. Uh, so, there's, so there's that uh, hop in there, Golding's hop, and golden berries. Uh, so that is delicious. Again, it is, it is more of a classical gin. The difference, and also I really detect the difference in, in as much as the, the taste, which, was, which is sublime, it's really lovely, um, was, was very uniform. And there's only just slight, slight changes uh, in terms of the taste. It was much more uniform where, you know, where I said I got lots of different rolling tastes. This was much more, but again, um, my, my sensation now in my mouth is I can still Still got the taste there, obviously not strong, but still there. Mm -hmm. but it made it feel very, very fresh, and there's sort of like a uh, lemony, citrusy, um, refresh. It's really, I was going to say, it's like with, with mouthwash, with mouthwash can be, it's, it's not, I'm not saying it tastes like mouthwash, but that, you know, that when you've had mouthwash and, and, and the taste has gone, but your mouth is left feeling really fresh zesty. and zesty, uh, yeah. And, and crisp, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is yeah. what you expect in a classic, yeah. Uh, but it's those modern ingredients, the, one, the ones we've used in there, to give it that slight twist away uh, yeah a, a touch but not miles away no very very nice so to try it with tonic mm -hmm. the word that immediately came to my head then 
classic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Classic. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it is a classic gin, but you should hopefully pick up a little bit of that caffeine lime yep. leaf in there, and a little bit subtle lemongrass, and a, a slight softness because of the pomelo peel. That pomelo peel gives it a nice softer note. Yes, no, it's, that, that is is lovely. It's. Uh, A nice summer. Mm. Mm. No, it's lovely, and it's very, very refreshing. But it's almost again that I would say is is very, very dangerous because mm -hmm. if someone told me that was a it, it with the tonic was a non-alcoholic uh, gin, I would believe them. Um, you know, there's no burn. No, there's no, no burn. It's just, just taste. It's just taste. It's yeah. Very, very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Super. Thank you. Very well, much. Oh, pleasure. The next one is going to be maybe it's a strange dynamic for you, mm. uh, and it's sometimes mistaken by people that come along and read the label. Uh, so people sometimes come along and go, "Oh, chocolate," and expecting uh, sort of you know a galaxy chocolatey type flavour or you know Milky Way type flavour. It's not that kind of chocolate. It's not it's not that flavour you're going to get. It's bitter dark chocolate. It's very much a grown up uh, gin and tonic. This okay. one. Um, so in, in there we've, we've got chocolate malt barley and that's used in the brewing industry as I mentioned for uh, making dark beers, stouts, porters, Guinness, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. And it's called chocolate malt barley because it's roast, very deeply roasted and it turns the barley a chocolate brown colour. Okay. It offers, affords some chocolate notes but it's bitter dark chocolate. But what we've done around that is we've, we've put in uh, a botanical layers that are things like uh, the organic cacao, uh, we've put in coconut, rosehip, and the other key ingredient, as I've mentioned earlier, is the uh, coffee that we use, and it's an Italian deep roast coffee, which flavour notes of that coffee are bitter dark chocolate. And what you should find when, when drinking that is at the back, right at the back of your palate, you'll get that bitter dark chocolate, probably yeah. especially when you drink it as, as a gin and tonic. No, I, I got it, yeah. I, the first thing I, I, I did, because I was trying to, I guess because my mind uh, was, was, was focusing on chocolate, because you know, so I was trying to find, and I did, I did, you know, I did certainly get that, that, that straight off, um, and the star, of anise, it was, was like there, but I just, I was so, um, my mind, you know, sometimes you, you're, you're tasting something and your mind just that is different yeah. so oh. you, you just you just you the mind my mind was just logging on to that mm -hmm. taste mm -hmm. rather than it usually takes people by surprise yeah and we've also found it's a it's a little bit of a, an 80 20 80 percent of the people get it and love it and 20 percent of the people don't like it mm. uh, and that's not so that's not a problem to no. us we want to court that kind of a little bit of controversy in that flavor profile sure um, and the 80 80 percent of the people that get it can't get enough of it. No, it's lovely. Yeah, so so well, try, try, it try it with the, the tonic. Thank you. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. It releases so much yeah. more. It's yeah. kept captive in a way. And gins at, at bottling strength are kept captive in a, in a little way. So when you add your tonic in there, it does open them up. Okay. And that's what you're getting there. It's just opened it up. Yeah. Wow. And again, um, that that's, tastes so innocent. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, you know, it, it's just so smooth. It just tastes so innocent. And and wow, that's no. the that's the reaction I want. I wanted you thinking about that one. Yeah, that one's a, a thinking gin. Yeah. that one. The, the, some some gins are, are, are not very complex. Our, our, our original has lots of complexity in there, but but it's very well balanced with all our tea and and the chai flavors running through there. And that that's that that is a, a sensational drink in its own right. That one's not trying to be anything else other than uh, a, a classic, classic, but with a modern spin. Yes. This one is about thinking, uh, and it yeah. does make you think, and it, ma it makes you ponder. And I've found, out of all of our gins, that, that's personally my favorite, but, and if we were gonna put our gins into awards, we don't do that. We haven't entered any awards with our, our gins. Mainly because you can send them to certain parts of the world and get lots of gold badges and stickers to stick on your gin and off you go. Uh, yeah. but, but we're not about that. Um, and we understand like the wine industry, you know, so, so there's lots of gold medals out there. Sometimes maybe they aren't justified yeah. so much. Yeah. Um, so we haven't really entered ours in, but if we were going to enter one into a competition, it would be that one mm. because it is so diverse and it, it, it's completely unique. out there. It's unique. There's nothing else like it. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Uh, and and the, the strange thing is that, that um, 
you, you mentioned sort of the thing that you want to think about it. Certainly, when you're drinking them neat, you're thinking about it, and but it's very rare that when you're having a tonic, because it's almost like much more of a one shot as you're you know uh, okay. you're, you're drinking it, and it's sort of so you're not thinking about it, and you're just looking at the overall experience when it's with with tonic rather than actually trying to detect all the flavours. Mm -hmm. But with that, even with the tonic. Uh, the flavours I was finding myself saying, "Well, is that, yeah, that's that chocolate. Well, that chocolate's coming. I can think. I can. I can taste coffee." And and mm -hmm. it was yeah, yeah, yeah. All those notes come through. Yeah. And it is a little bit of a builder that one. So the more that you just gently sip away at it, yeah, the, you get that that builds up in in the palate. Yeah. Uh, and I say a lot of it's right at the back of the palate. Those those deeper chocolate and uh, coffee notes are in there. Wow, yeah. that's lovely, Derek. Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Completely different. Yeah. So last but not least. So sorry about that, we uh, just had an interruption, a uh, phone call we had to take, so apologies, we've just flipped back in. So we're just going to talk about the uh, rose, rose, the no, rose, <laughs> I'm doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a lovely rose colour. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lovely it, rose it, it colour, it is, yeah. So the rhubarb. The rhubarb, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, so this is our rhubarb, it's taken us a long time to put it together, and we, we have to spend a, a lot of, uh, expend a lot of time and effort to get it right, just, just where we wanted it to be. Um, it would have been quite easy to follow the trend and do what everybody else is doing and, and just add some flavorings in afterwards. Yeah. So we've used rhubarb from the rhubarb triangle. Uh, okay. So uh, it's an 80-20, so we use 80% of rhubarb from the rhubarb triangle, uh, the Yorkshire rhubarb triangle that is. And we also use 20% of rhubarb from my garden. Okay. Uh, so, so it's got that little root into us still there uh, and that bit of massum in there as well. Uh, so that's the, the rhubarb element and then we've actually then put in there a little bit of rose petal okay. and, and ginger, so a classic rhubarb and ginger, but the rose petal gives it another dimension uh, and rose petal tends to give you a little bit of Turkish delight notes in there okay. uh, and move, move that little sweetness in there naturally. It's still distilled as we would distill a proper uh, London dry gin. Um, so the only thing we do afterwards, uh, and we can't call it a London dry gin because of that, is add the colour and just a touch of our own made sugar syrup. Okay. Um, and that just gives it that sweeter note, which people are expecting to find in the marketplace. Sure. Um, so, so it's a proper full London dry with just a touch of colour. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Rhubarb on the nose. Mm. That's full on rhubarb. I'm going to say full on. Some people might think, "Well, oh, it's too much." It's not too much. It's just, just the right amount of level. And now, so first of all, I've got the sweet, uh, the the rhubarb, and just the taste of the rhubarb. Now I'm getting the 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 the, um, uh, the slight sweetness, which reminds me of my mum's uh, rhubarb and apple pie. Just mm -hmm. coming in there is really uh, really nice, but not you know, again, not too sweet. It's not neat, and bear in mind, this is neat. Um, what what uh, APV is this? Is That's 42%. Wow, it's really, really smooth. Yeah. Really, really smooth. And, and a lot of these sort of products are, are sold at sort of 25% or yeah, something. Yeah, 20% liqueurs, uh, yeah. that kind of thing. So yeah. there's, there's a lot of products out there. And that, that's so it's more usually more approachable and easier to drink, etc. Yes. So, yeah. so, but we've managed to get that at 42%. Wow, yeah, yeah and that's very, very so, um, you know, In fact, mm -hmm. I don't think... Uh, I can hardly notice any difference in terms of the warming of my throat. I mean, mm. concerned with just obviously having the other gins of this, mm. so it's already warm. Mm. It's, it's not added to that, so, mm. so it's very, very smooth. Mm -hmm. And uh, a nice aftertaste as well. So, you know, I could drink some, some liqueurs, and some people say, you know, oh, you, you, you're not expected to drink this, you know, you need tonic in it, you, you won't like it on its own. Mm. Uh, but that you can drink on its own, it's, it's, it's very nice indeed. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, let's have a taste with, with tonic. Wow. That should release a little it bit has, more of the actually. Aromatics. As I was going to say, there's almost more taste to that, in, mm -hmm. in, strangely, bizarrely, from it being neat. It is much more. It's lighter, but somehow uh, the flavours sort of balloon in your, balloon in your mouth. Um, with it being watered down, they're not lasting as long as mm -hmm. when you're drinking it neat, because obviously, you know, I guess it's down to viscosity in your, in your mouth and Absolutely. staying it, there. It will stay there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, that's an, again, if that's 42%, if that's um, you know, you could 
easily drink that like pop and be, <laughs> get yourself into a I right... I advocate you do <laughs> No, that. no, I wouldn't, yeah, but, but uh, you, yeah, could, you could easily do that and get yourself into all sorts of trouble. It is, and we've taken that same tight cut. Yeah. So we're not taking deep cuts with, it, with any of our gins. They're very tight cuts, so you're getting the best possible gin out of it. Uh, so it's very wasteful uh, mm. in terms of you know the, the, the heads and tails cuts. Are very, there's a lot of tails, so we don't go very deep in the hearts cut. Okay. Um, so so effectively, it's a, a costly way to make it. Yeah. But we believe in making the best we possibly can. So. so that's okay. Well, about. for for the the heads and tails and the heart, where there is going to be a video, I put a link uh, on how gin is made here, um, and uh, there'll be a link, and there's a whole uh, different episode on that. So if you're wondering what what uh, the hearts, tops, and tails means, you can find out in that video. That absolutely fantastic, Derek. That is really a very sophisticated range of uh, of, of of gins, um, and you know I. I, 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 I go to say I think um, they're world class, sir. Well done. Thank you very much. That's a pleasure. Well done. De yeah. Deserved. It's been a uh, pleasure to bring them, bring them to you. Yeah, well, if you, uh, as uh, we mentioned in the previous uh, video, and we did another link to that, um, there is a, a, a gin uh, school here where uh, Derek goes through all of the history of gin. Uh, you get to ch a chance with his guidance uh, to make your own gin. I uh, say so here, in, uh, and I'll put the links uh, down below. Uh, well worth a visit. Well worth a visit, guys. Thank you very much indeed for your time, Derek. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. Gin, gin. <laughs>